Hi there, Leo. Welcome to your January 2018 love reading. I'm Raina and um, laying out the cards. I'll also be picking an oracle card from the Whispers of Love deck. That's, uh, to me, that's your card. So I'm sticking to that, even though my book says otherwise. Okay, two cards. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Okay, well, one thing right off the bat, uh, the, the, when I got those two cards, the first thing I said to myself was swift justice. Okay, so, hmm, the plot thickens, I guess. I don't know what that means. Maybe that will mean something to someone. But um, it's like, I, I was thinking even of like a quick divorce. But it doesn't have to be. I mean, this could be like instant karma. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but, you know, justice, I, I don't want to say it. I mean like that things are righted. Let's put it that way. So I'm just going to start from the beginning because I'm not the type of person where I look at a spread and I can instantly see what's going on. The heart of the matter is the Queen of Wands, which is a card that is associated, it's for sure associated with fire energy, Aries, Leo. Sag is attributed or connected to Sag. Uh, particular in particular, but I connect it to Leo just based on, um, you know, I don't know if this Morgan Greer deck is consistent in that sense with the, with the uh, Rider weight deck where Pamela Coleman di did the illustrations if there's a, a sunflower that the uh, Queen of Wands is holding in that deck. I, I don't, I can't remember exactly, I haven't used that deck in a while. So I'd have to, to check. I highly doubt it, just based on what I know of that deck. But um, to me, the sunflower is a perfect uh, symbol for fire energy. Fire energy is positive, okay? It's enterprising. So it, it's going out into the world and saying, you know, I'm going to do my thing in this world. I'm going to make my mark in this world. And there's a sense of constructive behavior, a sense of purpose. I think that's an important one with fire is that there is this, um, what's that word? Like um, being on a mission, having this, you know, the fire is goals, I would say. And the queen represents the mother. It represents the the feminine and the intuitive uh, fire is masculine. So when you combine the two, you're getting female energy that is positive energy. And not to say, you know, because I'm a woman, but I always thought it was kind of funny that they would say, you know, masculine is, is positive and feminine is negative. Like, for instance, with batteries or something like that. And it's because it's recessed. And we, you know, you even look at the uh, uh, genitalia. <laughs> And it's the same thing. But there's also, I think that there's a part of that as male and female uh, human beings that, that we tend to have the feminine can sometimes be the, I, want, I don't want to say negative um, in terms of like being, you know, nasty to people, but that, you know, because men can be nasty too, but there's more of a, covert hostility with some, you know, with women sometimes where men tend to kind of act out where it's like, you know, what is going on. Women tend to kind of be more of the caddy, you know, behind somebody's back and things like that. So this kind of combination is the, 
positive side of femininity, where there is this sense of sensitivity, where the male energy tends to, what it tends to lack, the insight that we associate when somebody is looking beyond the surface and kind of analyzing things at a deeper level. So let's, I'm going to continue this because it's setting the stage here. I can't say it just by itself. Um, the, the card, but, but let me put it this way. You could be that queen of wands individual. Okay. That could be talking about you specifically. What we have here as the foundation card is the page of pentacles. And this is a, a card of, this, this could be like an earth sign individual. Now page, page is somebody who might be chronologically younger. Okay. And the thing about this is if you are a woman and most of the people watching this will be women, I guess it could be a man with a younger man too, but there's a sense of seniority uh, power that this person would have over the page. So my feeling is that I know this is going to sound crazy, that there might be some um, <laughs> older, uh, older women who are perhaps um, in a position of authority who are having an affair with a younger person, particularly a male, and this could be in the workplace because the pentacles are involved and the pentacles connect with um, work energy and the Queen of Wands can be like a female authority figure. Um, the wands can connect to career matters as well, but in a different sense. With, with Pentacles, it's more of the practical side of things. I would say it's like the difference between the 6th house and the 10th house in astrology. But in any case, um, it's not, you know, we're not talking about sexual harassment. We're not, we, I mean, and I'm not trying to you know, laugh at that because that is a serious matter. I'm talking about it just, maybe it just happened, okay? And it could just simply be a younger person, um, younger than you. And yes, is some, someone might say, is this just for an affair? Is this a serious relationship? It could just be an affair. And you may totally know that this is the case. But let's look at this card. This card is the, the challenge, and this is the King of Cups. Now, you notice that the Queen has her King here, but he's not in a good position. So what that suggests to me is somebody who, this is your mate, and this is a fling. And your mate is closer to your age, maybe even older than you are. But they, but the mate is not um, behaving with you in the way that they should. Now, could they be a water sign? Absolutely. A water sign would be Cancer, Scorpio. That's a big one attraction for you and Pisces. Now, the thing about it is that this, in the challenge position, this person, whoever he is, could be an alcoholic because, you know, he's holding a cup in his hand, but that cup isn't serving him very well. He could be somebody who is cruel, okay, emotionally manipulative, blaming you for all of his problems. And it's very important, I want to say this to Leo people, it's very important for you to be around positive people. It's funny to me, I think the uh, fire signs and the water signs are the, the two elements that are the most emotional. And yet, it, it, the way that it works out is that fire is different than water and how it perceives emotion and how it expresses emotion. But still, Fire signs are positive, but if they're around negative people, it can easily rub off. This person may be very in a very bad place emotionally because they have other problems, as I mentioned, perhaps addiction or things like that. 
And so they cannot, they don't know how to be in their life. They're very in a, in a, a sense of darkness. So those kinds of people are, um, they could be energy vampires because they're trying to make themselves feel better through bringing other people down. So if any of this sounds remotely what's happening, I would be very interested to know because the Page of Pentacles is, to me, like somebody who is younger. Now, um, I was thinking even of a Gemini individual because when I think of Page, I think of messen messages and messenger, the Gemini, Mercury. So perhaps it's somebody from work who is a Gemini, <laughs> but some and and if they're not younger than you they they could be just more youthful but this is also a very early in the relationship so it might be like an early type of relationship and whatever is going on it may not last forever but it's kind of a bridge between for you to be able to see your worth if you felt beaten down i'm not talking about physical abuse but just even emotionally felt beaten down by somebody that you're with and it's kind of like this person's a fresh, a breath of fresh air, okay? The higher message is the Page of Swords. This is a card about vigilance, okay? Now, this is the spiritual message. So it's not simply saying be careful about a certain situation. Um, in general, this would be on the spiritual level, a lesson that you can learn in your life uh, in the future about the choices that you make, Leo, because you make may make choices in the heat of the moment that end up in the long term you live to regret. Okay, and again, because of that emotional sense of urgency, if you have the the moon in Aries, if you have you know that could indicate rash emotions. If you have the moon in um, in a water sign that could make you much more especially like Pisces where you're just kind of like not discriminating uh, properly not discerning properly what you need to discern and you know it's funny when I said discriminating I noticed that I quickly said oh I that's a, that's a bad word you know it means that somebody is a bigot or you know racist or something like that discrimination has doesn't have to be a bad thing at all. Actually, I wonder how it came to mean those things because actually discrimination is something we all have to develop if we're going to have an orderly, non-chaotic life. Discrimination simply means that you can see, you can separate things out and see what is good for you, that you have good judgment and say that thing is not good for me and, and I'm able to see that. And, and making the choice that is good for you. So let's talk about these two cards that um, came out together. We have the Justice card, which is connected to Libra. So, hmm. But fairness is the hallmark of this card, is, is what this card really is about. And then we have... The Eight of Wands, which is a card of things happening very rapidly. Um, so the thing is, you there may be like something within you that I, I think this is true of Leo, and I think I've mentioned this before, and I've had Leos confirm this. It was something that just came to me, which I I can imagine it being true for a lot of people, where you take a lot. Leo, you're a fixed sign. You may just like endure a lot. And then when you're done, you're done. And so you may be trying, you may have tried to keep a marriage going. Maybe you have children with this person because uh, kings can be fathers. You could be the mother. And it just, the, the, maybe there was just like some straw that broke the camel's back and then you were done. And, and in one case, the straw that broke camel's back might be this page of pentacles, that this person came into your life and treated you the way that you deserve to be treated, and you had been treated so crappily 
uh, for so long that you forgot that you deserved better. And as arrogant as Leos are accused of being, there are plenty of Leos out there that are, um, you know, that aren't, that don't feel secure, that don't feel um, confident because of their past, because of other, you know, things in their, in their uh, astrological makeup that make them more timid or unsure of themselves. You know, if you have the moon in Virgo, we should start a club, a support group for people with moon and sun and fire signs, moon and Virgo, because we tend to be like that. And, but anyway, um, yeah, so, so that's very interesting. So it's almost like the dam bursting and it's like, I, I was going to say, damn it. <laughs> Uh, I deserve fairness, but I don't want to damn anything, so bless it. I deserve fairness, okay? And I deserve to be treated properly. I deserve that. It's not optional anymore for me to be treated the way I deserve to be treated. Okay, I did that card. Um, what's coming in is represented by the chariot card. Okay, hmm. Now this is interesting. Let me tell you something because I'm recording this on the 11th of December. Okay, in 11 days from now, ooh, that, there's some master numbers for you. It's going to be December 22nd. December 22nd is the date of the full moon in Cancer. This is going to happen um, for you in particular in your sixth house of work, okay? So I'm telling you about something in December that you may be listening to in January, but I think most of the people who listen to this listen in December, so it might be still relevant for you, but this is actually going to be uh, Leo in your, I, did I, I hope I didn't say sixth house of work. I meant your 12th house, okay? And um, this is a sign right before you. And so this may be secrets coming out, you know, the moon, the full moon in the 12th house could be some kind of thing that comes out. And that, when I say the justice and the eight of wands, that could be connected to that, actually, even though this card is coming out after that. It could be connected to that, where you find out something and then it's like on. You, you're like ready to just leave now. You're not even going to wait. Um, so that could be one one thing. The other thing too is, uh, and I'm still talking about timing, look to anything, even if you're listening in January, look to that period of time um, for any kind of thing that came out, if it wasn't, it could have been in the form of a dream, a premonition, or something like that, because that could be a very psychic time when you have full moon in the 12th house. Full moons are, uh, you know, high psychic energy, and then you add the 12th house, and it could be something that helps to guide you. Oh, it's funny. What am I talking about here? This is another Cancer card, Queen of Cups. Okay. So this is also a card of psychic ability. Um, for, you know, this is very interesting because I was thinking, gosh, there's all this cancer stuff. Why is it cancer? Cancer is the 12th house. What is, you know, what is the, I mean, you, that person, the king of cups might be a cancer. That's for sure. But I think, you know, with the, with the queen of cups, this is a card of great intuition. Okay. And what you have to do, Leo, is you may get some kind of message, psychic message that can come in a dream or what have you. You're going to have to interpret that to be able to decide what your next move is going to be because I realize now that cancer is very important for you in the next year and a half because you have the north node there, uh, you know, in cancer in the 12th house, okay? So what that means is that there could be, and it might be a person that comes into your life um, who, maybe it's this person right here, a new person that comes into your life that is a soulmate, a, 
a friend, a protector, somebody who is, um, you know, there for you. And, um, but it, you know, it could actually be like, since this is a love reading, I would think it would be more of a romantic, of a romantic nature. And that person might change your life. They may be doing something, um, you know, if they're, if they are your twin flame or your soulmate, they, even if you're middle-aged, this could be you've been waiting your whole life for this person. Who knows? Um, we do experience these North Node transits um, on a semi-regular basis, probably once every 20 years. I don't know. Do the math. But still, the, that's like once in a generation that we experience it. And... Um, well, th well, let me think about that, because if that's every 20 years, it takes a year and a half for it to go through one sign. Okay, well, 18 months, year and a half. Yeah, almost 20 years. Could you go through it twice in your lifetime? Maybe not. So maybe it's a, a very um, important uh, type of uh, a transit. Well, we do have Saturn returns, and they go into house every 30 years well whatever the point is is that this is a pivotal time for you spiritually and maybe the real question is what is it that you want to do with your you know what is your version of your philosophy of life what is your philosophy of life because this even though the 12th house is more mystical than you know, I'm, I'm talking about the ninth house, which is kind of, um, well, the ninth house. Um, yeah, you, you've had a lot of interesting experiences probably with um, your ninth house. But, uh, you know, in the form of uh, Uranus being in that house. But still, I mean, the point is that you are someone who probably needs to really tune into things. Maybe you've been kind of too much in that role, uh, you know, the Queen of Wands, you could be very absorbed in your career and feeling that sense of empowerment, but your private life is in shambles and you need to tune in to your higher self more, perhaps. And um, so the Queen of Cups would kind of validate what I was saying about even the Page of Swords, but in a more mystical way, not in an analytical way. Um, but in terms of the Cancer energy, too, remember that Cancer is the fourth house of home and family. Uh, your, the house that you rule, the fifth house, is about children and even conceiving children. So for any Leo people who want to become mothers or parents in general, I think that that Queen of Cups is saying, choose wisely, and you're choosing based upon... Um, how you get along with this person, not about sexual attraction, not about what kind of job they have, you know, whether, well, I mean, obviously you have to pay bills and stuff, but you know what I mean, that you're not um, looking at it from a snobbish point of view, but you're just looking at whether that person has a good heart, if they're responsible and things like that. So that could be another possibility. Uh, but it's a very dreamy card. It's, a, it's not a card that I would associate with a lot of um, practicality, but this could also indicate that somebody has um, captured your heart, you know, perhaps, and that you're very receptive to it. So, okay, let's pick a card from the... I was just about to sign off, and I said I'm going to pick a card from the Whispers of Love deck to cap off this reading. Love endures. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. <laughs> I don't know if that was the best card for me to pick for you because you're probably trying to get away from that person. Um, but you know what? The thing is that you can love somebody and not be married to them too. So even if you do, you are known as very loyal. Leo, be loyal from a distance. If you're with somebody who is, um, you know emotionally abusive, um, they're bringing you down in some way, they have an addiction that they're not willing to address, um, you can still love them from afar. 
And it'll, it'll actually be a pure love because you won't be enabling them. You know, you won't be helping them to continue on that path. They'll have to look at themselves eventually. So, okay, that's what I have for you, Leo. If you'd like a private reading, please click the link below. Have an awesome beginning to 2019. Bye.